Hey there guys, Mark here from Soulfly Concepts and welcome back to the channel. It has been a while and I honestly apologize for those that missed the community post. The reason for that is because I'm now a dad. Yes, I am. I'm a Faja. I have no time for anything anymore. <laughs> anyway, in the last video we looked at using ADE to add taxiways, designate those taxiways, things like that. In this video we're going to be looking at using the ground poly tools inside ADE. We're also going to be adding a ground poly image um, to the airport itself. So we're going to be looking at Newcastle in slightly more detail, make it blend in with the environment around the world, or should I say in Newcastle. Sit back, relax, you might learn something. So for those of you looking at my airport design editor thinking something is different, something's changed, I don't I don't know what it is, something has definitely changed. I don't like change! Well, this particular image is exactly the same image as last time. All I've done is softened out the edges and gotten rid of um, all of the parked aircraft, all the taxiway markings, things like that. I will show you how to do that in just a sec. But it's exactly the same image. Nothing else has changed regarding the image. Like, the size is the same. All that I've done is taken away a few things including the edge. As you can see, it's now soft. Also, the surfaces of the vehicle links to asphalt, so it blends in with the rest of the airport slightly better. I didn't need to do that, I just wanted to because it was bugging me in the previous video. <laughs> yes, it was. Okay. So in order to make adjustments to imagery, you're going to need an image editor. I use Photoshop, you could use GIMP or an online variation of Photoshop, whatever you want to use. As long as you can save the image as JPEG and TIFF, that's all that matters. So we just go uh, into our recent files, that happens to be that one. In order to grab this image you'll need FSRF tiles and that program is completely free, link in the description. What you want to do is you want to scroll into Newcastle or the airport you happen to be working with. You want to go ahead and find it, change your folder names, and basically start. A um, bit more in depth on that. What you want to do is you want to open the software up so you can see what you're doing. <laughs> okay, so what you want to do is you want to go over to Newcastle, zoom in, um, a bit, so where it says your current zoom level, in here, minus, yeah, right, so we can use a download resolution of minus 2, in this case. Okay, what you want to do is look at the tile count here, and it currently says the amount of tiles in the area. Make sure it says area count 1, because we need one image, we don't want 7, we want 1. I mean, it would never be seven anyway, but we don't want seven. More than one is a problem. Earth service. Keep that set to the default service two in this case. You can change the GE or Google Earth, whatever you want, if you have that available to you. Scenery compiler, FSX. Yeah, it's a standard compiler. We've all got FSX compiler for this. Area snap needs to be off. Create masks. That needs to be turned to no if you only want one image. However, if you are doing a coastal airport, or in this case here, I've got London City in the middle of the screen, um, you can go ahead and turn that to yes, so you can create water masks for the area. Compile scenery, we're going to have that set to no because we don't want the scenery compiled, we want the imagery, that's all we want, just the imagery. And use cache. I can't go into depth on how much that doesn't matter. I mean, it does if you're downloading for an airport that you've already downloaded in the past, but it doesn't matter. Full stop! Once you have everything sorted out, draw a box around Newcastle, change your file names, so in this case we've got working folder and scenery folder, just add a backslash and whatever the scenery you're working on, so in this case Newcastle, so NCL. I'm going to do the same for the other one, NCL. And when you're ready, go ahead and click Start. Now we'll have a bar moving very slowly across the screen. 
for about three or four days. And once that's done, we'll have in the bottom our column and row count going up. Again, that'll take about three or four days. And once it's all sorted, you're going to be left with an image. One singular image. It doesn't really take three or four days, it just takes however long your internet connection, or however fast your internet connection is, depending on that, and depends on how pow 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 powerful your computer is. But yeah, once you have the imagery, it will be sent to the working folder at the top there, so fset slash work slash whatever you've written down. In my case, it was local disk fset work EGNT Newcastle. Now I have done this before, I've already made a JPEG and a TIFF of the image itself. But we have the main image here, which is this guy, already on the screen. Now what I did to get rid of the edges is I simply double clicked on the base layer and then pressed enter. I then grabbed my eraser tool, made sure it was fairly large. Like so, and turn the hardness down just to about half, so in this case, what, 49%? But yeah, I turned the hardness down to about half, and I just took away the edge. So I'm using the half hardness here just to be more accurate on the edge. Now something you might want to do is you might want to take your finger off the mouse button every so often, just in case that happens. And you can just press Ctrl and Z or Edit Undo to get rid of that. So for the first time in history, you are seeing me be accurate. It's a bit weird, I will admit, it is a bit weird. But accuracy is key, like you want to try and get this done right. Well, if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well, that's what they say, isn't it? Okay, just holding down Alt to zoom out, and Alt and the scroll wheel. Just holding down Control and scrolling, just so I can go left and right. Just getting rid of some of this around the edges, and I'm just scrolling up and down to move the image up and down. Okay, now you may have noticed accuracy has disappeared completely, I'm not doing that anymore. Okay, now once you've gone around the entire edge, just use the same brush, but we're going to drop the hardness down to zero. I'm going to increase the size by about double, and we're just gonna lightly tap around the edge like this. I say tap more like lightly brush around the edge. And what that does is that gives the edge a nice feather, nice and soft, allowing it to blend more seamlessly into default scenery and orbex and whatnot. Okay, now once we've done that, we can then focus on getting rid of some of these ground markings. I am not going to do everything, but you are going to want to. So zoom in by holding down Alt and scrolling in. What we want to do is click on the Clone Stamp tool here. Now, if you don't have the Clone Stamp tool in the sidebar like this, you'll have another guy, which is the Pattern. Uh, the Pattern Stamp tool. So just go ahead and click and long click on it, so don't let go of the button. And then let go of the button over the one that you want, which is in this case the Clone Stamp tool. So hold down Alt to select. Now what we have now is we have this particular area selected. So when we paint, we're going to have this area being sampled and that being painted straight over there. So you can then just paint. Don't worry too much about um, the white line appearing. We just select a different area and just go again. And that's how you go ahead and get rid of the ground markings. Now, of course, that is done on a fairly large scale, so you don't want to use the ginormous brush and go mental, because there's a lot of detail in the ground. I mean, look at Newcastle, there's like these concrete slabs inside the asphalt area. Now, how we deal with that is slightly different. It's the same technique, but there's a bit more accuracy involved. So let's go ahead and turn the hardness up and turn the brush size down. Maybe a bit more. There we are. 
Okay, let me go ahead and sample that bit. Okay, now that's how you would do that. Again, it's going to be on a massive scale, so it is quite time consuming. I will point that out straight away. It is fairly time consuming, which is something I do apologize for. You will have to take your time with this kind of thing. It's not going to happen in five minutes. But yes, once you are happy with everything you have done, you can go ahead and save as. Of course, there's aircraft I want to get rid of as well. There's all the Roman. There's aircraft I want to get rid of as well. There's all of the runway markings, etc. So what we want to do is we want to get rid of all of those too. I'm not going to do that right now because I've already done it. But once you're happy with where you are with the ground image, go ahead and save as. So Control Shift and S to save as and save it as a TIFF first and. Make sure it's called something normal, so in this case, Newscastle 2020. And then you want to save an additional copy. So Control Shift and S again. And you want to save an additional copy as a JPEG. And what you want to do is you want to tone down the JPEG a little bit so it's not humongous, so AD can handle it nicely. That's everything we need to do with Photoshop right now. So we can go ahead and close it. Now I have told you what you need to do regarding the image. It's up to you entirely if you choose not to. You can skip that entire step if you want to. However, I would recommend you do not. Now I've already told you how to position the image in Airport Design Editor, which is fine. But just to recap, we want to go ahead and right click, add image. Go ahead and find our image which in this case is this guy right here. Click open. And then you want to click on enter corner coordinates. And to find them, you just go back into the folder you compiled the imagery to. And it is in the information file. Just double click on that. And we have the corner coordinates here and here, here and here. Now it starts off with longitude, so you want to take note of the longitude first. So if we just bring that guy back on the screen. We want to be using this guy first, which goes into here, which is top left and bottom right. So longitude, longitude. Not longitude, 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 longitude. These two. And then you get the latitude for top left and bottom right. Top left, bottom right. And once you're happy with that, go ahead and click, well, I say happy with that. Once you've entered numbers into those boxes, go ahead and click save. And this will appear on your screen. It won't be exactly like this, but it will be something similar. You'll have the image perfectly positioned where it should be in the real world. Now, as of last time, we have already gone ahead and added all our parking spaces, things like that. We've already added our taxiways, our hold shorts, and our runway. We've already added the main apron as well, which is good. What we want to do now is we want to add some ground polygons. For now, I'm just going to be using the default ground polygons that come standard with Airport Design Editor. Let's go ahead and use the Add Custom Ground Line. Zoom in a bit more with the scroll wheel. Click there, 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 and double click at the end. If this is the first time you're using um, the ground polygon tools inside ADE, after a restart or whatever, you shut down ADE for any reason, it can take a minute to load up. What we want to do is we want to change the layer from layer 24, we want to change it to layer 28. Okay, so once you select layer 28, so it's definitely above layer 24, we can go ahead and change the width of the line. So this is a simple ground line, as you can see here, it goes around some hatching, so it's not going to be thick. So 0 0.5, just the general taxi line width, so 0.5, and let's go ahead and select the texture. 
like I mentioned, we're only using the default textures, the, 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 the default textures shipped with Airport Design Editor. So let's go for GP Pattern. And we can see just by looking at it, it's white. So, white line. Okay, what we want to do next, we want to click on this guy here, which is Custom Ground Polygon. And it's added in exactly the same way, only it's a polygon instead of a line. So if we zoom in a bit, try and get as close to the edge of the line as possible, overlap a little bit, and just clicking our middle mouse button to move up here. Go click in there, click in there, and we'll click in there as well. Go down to the bottom, and we'll just double click when we're finished right there. So double click to finish, and we want layer 24 this time, which is what it's already set at, which is fantastic. And once again, we use our default textures. We want crosshatch, and it wants to be white, so crosshatch white. Right, so we now have a crosshatching selected, so we can click OK. Now, there is going to be a couple of issues inside Flight Sim if we just jump straight in for that now. This texture is not going to be positioned properly. Because if we zoom in a little bit, I don't know if you can see it, but our shape only covers, well, two of the stripes, really. And inside Flight Sim, those two stripes will be humongous. So what we want to do is we want to make this shape bigger so it encompasses more of the texture. Now this texture is seamless, so it will be infinitely tiled to the left and to the right, and the same with up and down. So horizontal and vertical, it's infinitely tiled. So what we want to do is we want to make this shape bigger, essentially. We're not going to change the size of the actual shape itself, just the size of the shape and the texture mapping. So select all. And this guy here, which is resize, just use our scroll wheel on our mouse. So we want to scroll in to make it, well, to make the shape bigger. Yeah, that's fine. And click on rotate. There we go. Okay, now that might still be a little bit too big, but we'll find out when we go inside Flight Sim and have a look. So that's how you add ground polygons inside Airport Design Editor. Um, let's continue with this. I'm going to go ahead and add, well, I'm going to go ahead now and create the main ground image for this airport, so for Newcastle. So in order to do this, you're going to need something along the lines of SketchUp. Open up SketchUp. There you go. Now, because we have that image perfectly positioned inside Airport Design Editor, we can see how big it needs to be. Now, this is why I didn't change the size of the image or anything like that. I just made it a JPEG, so it's got a white background and the feathered edges. If you use this technique, you can't go wrong. So go ahead and pop that over to the other screen just so I can see SketchUp. So let's start by examining the size of this. So we'll just double click on the image. And that gives us the width and height in meters. This is what we want to take note of. So I'm going to pop that over the other screen just so I can see it. Open SketchUp app. Click on our box tool. And I'm going to draw our box. So this is going to be the height. And this is going to be the width. Right, so I've just clicked once on the mouse. I can move it freely without pressing anything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to type in those numbers now. So that is 3954.1. So 3954.1. And it is 2405.5. So that's the height. So I'm just written in the height. Oh no, I haven't. Okay, it's fine. Whatever. So um, 3954.1, so 3954.1 comma space, and it's 2405.5. And when you're happy with that, just go ahead and press enter. And there is a box, the exact size we need it. Just click on our eraser tool and zoom into this guy back down here. 
Get rid of him. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to triple click on everything. I'm going to reverse the faces, grab our move tool, find the midpoint there, just hover over it, and find a midpoint there, just hover over it, and just go to where they... We'll get a connection in a minute. There we go. And straight into the middle. Okay, so now, if we place our image inside here, the middle of our image will become the center point of this image. Which means we have the coordinates for it as well. So let's go ahead and populate that with an actual image. Click on our new material box right there. Click on the Browse button, and it's in Local Disk, and FSET, Work, and it's EGNT Newcastle, and we want to make sure we click on our TIFF. Now, this is why we save two different versions. We save one as a JPEG and one as a TIFF. The TIFF is simply for use inside SketchUp, because it takes away the transparency. I mean, it, it adds to transparency, and it's also a very high quality image as well. So when we come to put that into Model Converter Rx, it will maintain quality. Okay, now once it has loaded in, don't forget to give your texture a name. Always give your texture a name. And we're just going to put uh, N C L underscore G1. Okay, now press OK to save it. There it is. Just paste it straight in there. Click on the texture and pop it straight in there. Now right click, go over the texture, and hit position, zoom in, a long way apparently, just making things a bit bigger now, zoom out, make it bigger, make it bigger, there we go. Okay, now go ahead and turn off the fixed pin, so right click and click on where it says fixed pins. And just drag the pins to the corners. Now because this box is the exact size we need it to be, right, any texture warping or anything like that, any, any, um, any imagery you get for Flight Sim X, or P3D even, will be slightly warped in the sort of horizontal axis. And the reason for that is because the Earth is actually curved. But what we've got here is we have now adjusted things so the image is the exact size it needs to be. Because we have this box, which is the exact size it needs to be, thanks largely to Airport Design Editor. What you want to do now is you want to click on it three times. Right click and click on Make Group. To open the group, just double click on the image, grab our offset tool, zoom in a bit, and you see this jittery edge around the outside? Yeah, I made that on purpose. It's so we don't have to map all the way to the edge, because mapping to the edge inside SketchUp for some reason caused blurry textures, I don't, I don't know why. Just find the midpoint and go midpoint to midpoint with our line tool. Same over here. Midpoint to midpoint, midpoint to midpoint, and basically just keep going with this until your boxes are just smaller than 150 meters. So if, if we have a quick look in Airport Design Editor, you can see that I put a black line around the edge of the image. Now the reason why I've done that is because it allows me to see where the edge of the image is. Well, we're going to do now is we're going to open that group back. Okay, we're already in the group. Cool. What we're going to do now is we're going to click on our eraser tool and we're going to hold down control. I'm going to get rid of these lines. Now, what I'm doing is I'm not actually deleting the lines, I'm just softening the lines. So the section cuts is still actually there. However, 
they won't be displayed. Uh, the lines themselves won't be displayed in Flight Sim anyway, but uh, this allows me to make slices and ultimately increase quality. Okay, unsurprisingly, I don't think I've missed any. <laughs> nice. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to select everything. You can see these section cuts in the middle now. You can just click on the first face, right click, and click on Make Unique Texture. Now what this will do is it will take into account all of the section cuts and it will make as many textures as it needs out of the main image. And you're going to see a massive jump in quality. And the reason why we don't go all the way to the edge is simply because if we were to see a massive jump in quality, you'd see the ones around the edges will be very, very blurry. Right? They'll be distorted. They won't be sharpened, they'll be distorted, which is not what we want. We want everything to maintain a high quality. Now when you export from SketchUp into Model Converter Rect, it takes the size into account. So our textures are going to be roughly 250-ish by sort of 300, give or take. So we can expect our textures to be the same size. Flight Sim does not conform with that. It wants 512, um, 256, 128. It wants power of 2. So you're never going to see a 3 at the end of that number, you know what I mean? But if we zoom in now, we can see the jumping quality. We can see how, how nice things look. Whereas before, if we were to zoom in, it would look quite blurry. It wouldn't look great. One more thing we can do is grab our eraser tool and just get rid of this edge. We no longer need it. Keep in mind this picture is still perfectly positioned to where it should be inside ADE. So no matter what we do with it, we've taken away the edge. We haven't changed the size of the image itself. So our ground polygon is now a group and it is now ready to go. What we're going to do now is we're going to add ourselves some detail. I left a line in there. Don't normally miss things. Anyway, our ground polygon is now ready to go. So we'll grab our pencil tool and we'll add our detail layer. So adding the detail layer is just simply drawing over the top of things and texturing it with something semi-transparent. So let's go like that. Switch to our curve tool just so we can follow this curve nicely. As you may have guessed, I'm not being super accurate. Accuracy does not come naturally to me, at least not on this channel. Okay, if you need to make a gentler curve, just zoom in further, and you can. There we go. We've now got a line drawn around the edge. Now once we go around the entire edge, we can join this line up, so bear with me. Okay, with that all done, once you have gone around the entire edge and mapped out where all the aircraft movement surfaces are, um, the simple thing is, usually it will just all connect and you'll get a, a white object, but if it doesn't and you get left with this, for example, uh, first off you want to check to make sure you don't have any raised edges, so go like that. And let's hide the main image. Yeah, that looks alright to me. Doesn't seem to be any raised edges. And what you want to do is you want to go ahead and grab your pencil tool, and just join two lines together. See what's going on, because normally when this happens, it normally means there's a hole. There's, there's like a gap. So if we go like that, see that that's alright. Let's join up here. Yep, that's fine too. Let's 
go ahead and delete that guy. Go from the center of the runway to there. Yep, the runway's alright so far, at least. Now usually where you're going to find gaps are where things join up. So if we go like that, oh, you can see there's no gaps at all. But yeah, usually where you, can, where you find gaps are probably where you'd expect to see them at least. Like on curves especially, curves are really bad for gaps. Because even though you think you've joined everything up properly, usually there'll be something like... You can't even see it, it's so small, but like usually there's a tiny little gap and you'll just be like, ah, like so it, it was that. Remember, it took me ages to find a gap in uh, one of my sceneries. I was like, where is it? Okay, now once you've got everything, um, select it by triple clicking on it. So using our pointer tool, just click three times on the shape, then click on our move tool, zoom in a bit, and click once and move upwards. And just type in 0 0.1 and press enter. What we want to do now is reverse the faces and make a group. Okay, so what we've got here is our main base imagery, followed by a not yet textured detail layer. So let's go ahead and texture this thing, shall we? Now, Newcastle is mostly asphalt, so I've only got this concrete texture for one thing, and I haven't mapped where, out where that's going to be yet. So I need to grab myself an asphalt texture. Let's use Asphalt 6. Okay. Now what I like to do is I like to align the runway. Like that. I know I deleted all of these points, but uh, <laughs> I'm putting them back now. Why? Because I can. There is no other reason other than I can. And now it's auto-saving and I'm going to be sat here for about three days. Because I can. Right, so with the runway sectioned off, go ahead and click on our point tool, click on our asphalt texture, and paint it onto the runway. And we're going to line this up so it looks good. Turn on the fixed pins, just drag it to one of the edges and rotate. Yeah, that looks alright to me. We'll go with that. Okay, and now we're going to use our dropper tool here, click on the texture and go to there. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to do exactly the same thing, but I'm going to use a different point. So let's have a look up here. Okay, in order to map these out, I'm going to go ahead and use that pencil tool. I'm going to leave the group closed as it is, so I can just open the group when I'm ready, and I can... Well, I can explode the group and add these to it. Okay, so you see what I'm doing. I'm just drawing around these, and I'm drawing it on top of the closed group. So it's not actually becoming part of the group that I'm using. So once you've done all of these, we'll go ahead and explode the group underneath, and basically just join them to it. Okay, so with all those boxes drawn out, let's go ahead now and delete the surfaces from them. We'll explode the group underneath and we'll just join it into one. Just holding down control so I can um, add to my selection. 
and I'm just clicking in the faces. Tell you what, this part is so much faster than drawing them. <laughs> Okay, once you've got them all selected, press delete. And there's always one that I miss. Okay, now right click on the group underneath it, click on explode, and click again inside all of these guys. And intersect faces with model no intersections found fantabulous here comes a time consuming bit actually making these some faces there we go now again click three times triple click right click make a group okay so now we have this all mapped out as it should be so let's open the group by double clicking on it let's grab our apron whatever the chuffing hell it is there it is Right, so now we have our base image and our detail layer, which is slightly above the base image. And the reason why we work like this in SketchUp is for, well, simplicity, really, so we can see where the detail layer actually is. Inside Model Converter X, the base image will be set at the lowest possible level, and the detail layer will be in a level above that. In my case, it will be base layer 8 and then detail layer 12 and then above that we have all the good stuff like runway markings taxi markings etc let's jump into model converter x and i'll show you how to convert such a thing okay so here we have mcx let's go ahead and save this guy so it's going to be export 3d model i want to make sure it's saving as collider and we're going to call it NCL export. Now, depending on how many textures there are, it might take a minute or two to export. Uh, in my case, I've got like about 4 million textures, so it could possibly take an entire week. So inside Modern Converter X, what we want to do is we want to bring that particular item in. So... MCL, DAE, drag it into there. Now, DAE files or Collider files sometimes take a couple of minutes to load up. Um, it is simply to do with the fact that they are non conformant to Flight Sim. Like this thing loads Flight Sim models pretty much instantly, but it's got to do a lot of work with Collider files, so it, it takes a couple of seconds. Because the textures are already completely saved, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and do it again. So we've just pretty much just um, exported the model under the same name. Why are you taking so f***ing long? I'm not going to worry about these uh, black boxes for now, simply because I found a faster way of doing things in this video, funnily enough. Alright, so let's go ahead and export. Let's go ahead and export. 
shouldn't need to say it twice. <laughs> Replace Ground Poly Wizard. So somebody didn't save with alphas, um, so I'm just guessing, save your initial model and all its textures there, and the ones that don't save with alphas will just appear completely black in your boxes, so you can just select them as you go down. And when you've selected all of them, you can hit remove, and they all go bye-bye. That's so much faster than uh, everything else. Very nice. Anyway. Don't need to worry about the spec of zero right now because we're not compiling for P3D and that is still there, which is weird. It's really, really weird. Hmm. Well, let's hope it just doesn't play around with me. Okay, so wizard window, there we go. I need layer 12. Layer 12. Continue! Stupid thing. You're not grouping. Okay, so once we've got everything sorted to here, we can go back into Airport Design Editor, select our main image, and remember the center coordinates for this are the center coordinates for the main image itself in the real world. So inside the sim, it will be these coordinates exactly. One. Now, in order to get the altitude, just go ahead and double click on the runway. There's our altitude in meters. Copy that. So there. Heading zero. We're not changing that. Scale one, it's only one. So, yeah. Slice polygons every 100 meters. Yes, of course. Optimize reference point. Okay, fair enough. It's for FSX. When you are ready, go ahead and click on Convert, just making sure that your folders are correct. So we are working from NFSF files over there, NCL, MBL, and we're exporting to exactly the same folder. And the object is going to be called exactly the same thing, only it's going to be .bgl instead of .mdl. Convert. There we go. Now that is converted, what we're going to do is we're going to save this as uh, that. Okay, we're going to close what we don't need open, and we're going to go like that. Now we're going to go into and my FS files, FSX, NCL. Scenery. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to, well, we've already compiled the circle, that's fine. All we're going to do is we're going to drag this BGL and its textures into the active scenery folder, which I believe it's been a while since this has happened to me. Yeah, there we go. Okay, 
So it's been a while since uh, I've had to do that. So let's go ahead and put the BG albums there. Copy, obviously. And in our textures folder, we're going to go ahead and do the same. In they go. Hundred and ten meg, hundred and forty two items. Right. So launch FSX for the first time in nearly eight months. Okay, so here we are inside Flight Sim. We're checking out what we have done. Now, the first thing that I'm going to look at is a bit further on down the runway. I'm going to see if I am missing a massive section like I thought I might be. Oh, you know what? I'm not, actually. Hmm. Strange. Okay, there is no section missing, which is weird. And that is still there, which is weird. But okay. Okay, it looks okay to me. Right, so what we have done in this particular video is we have um, taken a very long journey. But ultimately, we have now placed a ground image and a ground detail layer over the scenery we've been working with. I haven't changed anything um, from the last video when it comes to the AFCAD. Oh, there's a missing bit right there. Look at that. I haven't, I haven't changed anything regarding the AFCAD since the last video. Like, everything that you have seen is what has been there, like... Nothing's changed apart from the surface of the of the vehicle link, and like I said, you're not going to see that anyway because it's being covered. Yes, it is. Anyway, in this video, we have moved on from simple AFCAD design and moved into the realm of ground polygons. Inside Airport Design Editor, we added this guy down here. Now, I've already got some ground polygons littering the airfield. Um, this is from a previous version of Newcastle that I once had. Um, I can get rid of them just by simply rummaging through a few folders and like seeing what what. But uh, yeah, that's from a previous version. So we can see here we have our ground polygons. The ones we added in ADE, like this. our runway we can see the differences in that because we had the runway texture facing one way and we had the other texture actually joined to the side of the top but yeah look at this you can see where the two of them actually meet okay right so that is that so in the next video which i'm not gonna lie to you don't know when that's gonna be haven't got a clue sorry um, in the next video, which will be How to Create Scenery Part 5, um, it's simply going to be a recap video, and I'm going to go over a few little things that may have been missed in the last, uh, well, this one includes, so last four. Uh, all you've got to do is drop a comment below to say I've missed something, and I'll cover it in the recap, because everyone likes a recap, unless they're watching videos back. Then they don't like a recap, then they want to get straight to the point. But yes, anyway. Uh, shortly followed by, well, it's going to be part six, let's say shortly followed, followed by part six, where we'll be adding runway markings. We're also going to be adding um, sort of tire skid marks along the runway and things like that, adding some general detail. And we're going to be looking into, actually... Um, adding proper taxiway lines, like this. Now, I said this is from a previous version of Newcastle that I had. It was a previous version that I was building, and I haven't quite removed all the scenery files from Flight Sim for it. So, I'll get onto that, I'll get rid of those lines. And those. Don't need those either. I'll get rid of those lines, and in the next actual building tutorial you won't see those stupid things but we're going to be looking at runway markings
and because this airport doesn't have any right now, we're also going to be looking at night lighting. Okay, so runway markings and night lighting. That's going to be part six. Part five is going to be a recap and an information touch up, if you will. Anyway, guys, my name is Mark from Sawfly Concepts. Sorry, it's been a bit of a, a while in the making, but I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, go ahead and hit the like button for me. If you didn't like it, hit the dislike button for me. Um, if you feel really nice, you can go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well. Become one of my long-term subscription buddies. And also hit that bell notification icon as well so you can be notified every time we release... We? Who the f*** is we? And hit that bell notification icon as well so you, can be con so you can be notified every time a new video gets released because... There is no schedule anymore. There is none of that. Also, if you didn't like it, hit the bell notification anyway. So every time a new video does come out on this channel, you know to avoid it. Yay, win win. Win 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 win. Anyway, like I said, my name is Mark from Soulfly Concepts. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video in probably about five or six years. Ta-ta!